are such an asshole. What is going on, YouTubes? This is Cappy coming at your heart. Also known as Cappy, the economist you refuse to invite to economics conferences. Got my not Dankin' Donuts here with the Jack Napier Truth mug. And I got I got my whiteboard. And I got my notes. You can see all the details because I'm a CPA. I'm all details, but we're not going to follow that. because. All right. <clears throat> you guys don't know who I am. I link to it below. Uh, Pete, the, the guy you refuse to invite to social gatherings, he's probably going to kick out of it now. He may be a redhead. I'm not sure. I don't know why. And this shit is getting in my way. Anyway, all right. I did want to talk about where to go. Well, you saw the notepad. Uh, and by the title of the thing, there's three different three different red pills for three different men. And uh, I noticed that we, we probably should talk about this because there are three distinct classes of men. And I don't mean to go into Alpha, Sigma, Beta, all the other Greek alphabet letters that um, what was it? Was it Royce that did that? Uh, but the problem still remains that uh, the red pill advice that's getting out there is not universal for everyone. There are some universalities that, that would apply to everyone. Uh, but I noticed this with my book, The Menu Life Without the Opposite Sex, also linked down below, that people are like, oh, dude, you just can't do if you're alpha. And it's like, yeah, I got it. But it's like, it's a, I'm, I'm kind of sick and tired of doing the, yeah, I know a tall Asian argument. The exception to the rules. Uh, obviously, because I'm an economist and an author, I want to write to the largest audience possible. And the vast majority of men are not alphas. They're not nines and tens. And if you go into that realm, that category, you become a true top 10 percenter. Uh, the laws of physics change for you. And, and therefore, the advice that is given is, is different. Some Again, some universalities don't change. Don't, uh, don't get married. Uh, don't get a long red wig that pokes you in the eye. Uh, don't um, don't put girls first. There's some commonalities there. But what I want to do was go through, and I'll, I'll go grab it. Hang on. Now I know why Pete has a whiteboard. But the basic, the real quick breakdown. Oh, hang on. You know what? I can't do this. This is just in my face too much. There we go. <clears throat> that was 16 bucks on Amazon. Uh, but it, it really does break down into this here. I'll try and angle it so you can see it. <clears throat> there are three categories of men. There's the one through the sixes, which I, I guess we just call you the unattractives. Uh, and keep in mind, we could be talking linear versus Gaussian distribution, but just let's just talk linear for now. It, it'll suffice. <clears throat> you got the seven through the eights, which I call the gray zone. And then you got the nines and the tens, obviously alpha. All right. And so let's kind of go through these a little bit. Should I do it like Pete where I point at it? I don't know. I'm just do my regular little notes here. <clears throat> All right. So the different strat. let's talk about strategies first. All right. Between the three different classes, uh, I guess. All right. Your statistics. Let's talk about populations first. All right. What what percentage of them we're talking? Nines and 10, we're talking like linear 20 percent of you. But we also know that 20 percent is just not cutting it. So I'm going to go a little bit more gossy. I'm, you got to be a top. 10% to fall like linear nine and 10 to the concept of a Chad or a nine or a 10. We're talking a distinct minority. And this is why I had that interview with tens. All right. And I interviewed by interviewed tens. I provided my results. It's a different world. All right. So <clears throat> the vast majority of this stuff, you guys don't even have to bother. You have your own little world. We'll get to different strategies and things you got to look out for mainly CYA. All right. So you guys aren't even part of it. And I am aware. Yes, dude, bro. Not alpha enough, bro. Just go to the gym, bro. Yeah, I, I, adv I advise going to the gym as well. But some people, especially on your height, you're just not going to break into it. Okay? It's a small percentage of the men that got the heights, the genetics, the looks, and the work ethic. That's the biggest component to go to the gym and get there. All right? So that's, that's one group. Then the next group <clears throat> is going to be your ones through sixes. I'm going to skip the gray zone for just a second because they're the largest percentage. They're the 80%. The actual 80% that women just don't find attractive. You're below attractive to women. All right. And so that that is where I think the vast majority 
of the red pill advice and the books I write and books everyone write and all the content created out there. It's for you guys, which includes your average Joes and your, your ugly Joes. Half the population is ugly. It is. Say even more now that we're like becoming a debauched, fat, sloven, uh, obese society. All right, but that's where the lion's share of guys are. And then I would say uh, in that group, I guess, in terms of average Joes, I would also throw in your gray zones. Your seven through your eights, which are going to be the wild card. Where you're like, <clears throat> man, okay, I'm good looking enough. I'm getting some girls, but I like to get girls a little bit more. I'd, I'd like to use this strategy. And there you got you got something to work with. You got some assets you can work with, and I think you could actually improve a bit. Now, everyone can improve except the nines and the tens. They're already there physically and all that. They, again, completely different games. But the ones through the eights, the uh, <clears throat> inferiors, average, uglies, and your gray zones, your good-looking men, not gorgeous, your good-looking men. The that's where the lion's share, if not all the red pill advice will apply because there's always room for improvement. And that's essentially kind of what the red pill is. All right. But when we give the advice, just become a nine or a 10, I, it, there, there might be some limitations on that. All right. I've even made the video. Look, it's more important that you go to the gym than it is that you go to college. If your goal is to get the girl sucked. Because it's so exceptionally rare that you're, and girls really, I mean, money comes, it's it's a second. It really is a distant second. I mean, they'll settle for it, but they're not going to be doing the, all the work for you. But that's why I said, like, look, you want to go, you want to save time? You will spend less time chasing girls if you go to the gym than if you go to the nightclub. Because the, you get attractive enough, they're going to do all the work for you. So again, it is it is a different world. So that is one strategy where if you're capable of becoming a nine and a 10, I'd say do that because you're going to waste so much time. Go get my book, uh, the book of numbers, analyzing the ROI on the pursuit of women. You guys will spend more time in school, more time, whatever, looks maxing with your cufflinks and coiffing your hair and like, oh, does these collars look nice? Go to the gym. You waste more time on that, <clears throat> more time on working overtime just to impress the girls with your financial and education and stability credentials than if you just get raw good looks and 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 uh, sexuality. And so going to the gym, like what? How long do you go to to school? College? Sometimes six years full time, including studying. Man, a third of the time, if you just went to the gym, you'll get the girls, and they'll do all the work for you. You want the date? You won't have to. Play all that game, all right? <clears throat> so it's a completely separate world or completely different laws of physics. Mass repels as opposed to gravitate towards one another. Light is dark. Dark is light. Cats and dogs living together. Mass hysteria. Different world. We'll get to it. <clears throat> all right? But generally speaking, the ones through the eights, that's where this self-improvement strategy, overall strategy comes in. So let's talk about now the, the individual strategies that we generally would follow, aside from just merely categorizing it as self-improvement, all right? <clears throat> the ones through the sixes, your strategy is very simple. Is it worth it? Yours is a pure cost-benefit analysis, which again, go get the menu life without the opposite sex and the book of numbers, analyzing the ROI of the pursuit of women. Because you men, like all other animals, you will die. You will waste your entire lives pursuing these women. So it is a huge, if not the ultimate economic question, the ultimate life question. Are you going to spend your time and invest your time chasing these girls? If you are, then you got to go into the path of self-improvement. You got to go and look at how do you optimize and become the best version of yourself you possibly can be. And there's plenty of books out there. Rich Cooper's book, I would say, is probably the, the primary one. Roll a little bit more deep dive. All right, but that's that's your strategy if you're a one through six. You're not even on women's radar. Are you going to put in the effort to get on women's radar? Not putting them on the pedestal. What are you going to do? You're going to go to the gym. You're going to get in shape. You're going to work hard. You're going to major in engineering. You're going to get your finances together. Keeping in mind <clears throat> that 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 does not mean you're putting them on a pedestal. Just saying if you would like to get girls and it's that important to you, then you got to go down the path of self-improvement. All of them are the path of self-improvement, by the way. All of them. Let's say you didn't put girls on the pedestal and you're a two. Well, you should still want to go to the gym. You should still want to go and get some hobbies and activities to make your life count. It's just that you are not going to burden yourself with the mental torture of whether or not you're going to get the girls. Because, like, I mean, if you're a two, maybe you're, you're disfigured or something like that. or You have an, an ailment. <clears throat> right. So it is a question 
of whether or not you're even one going to make the investment, two even going to waste the calories of mental energy worrying about attracting and and getting marrying women, having children, any kind of interaction or investment with women. All right. <clears throat> and so if you do decide, let's say you're a six or a five, and maybe you can bump yourself up. We've they've talked about you can you can Overton's window your way up one or two points. All right, then then now you got to start thinking about the gray zone area. But if you're a one or a two or a three or a four, and you can maybe get up to a four, five, six. Man, I you know not to be so dark and this is why I, I straddle both worlds. I'm like sometimes it's not a black pill for everyone, a red pill for everyone, a purple pill or maroon pill. It depends on who you are. It's like people say you're pretty optimistic. Oh, you're a doomer pill. It, it, no, it depends on the person, the situation. So if you're a two, <clears throat> I'll be quite honest, unless there's some miraculous stuff you got planned, you're going to ruin your life chasing after girls because they're just not good. It's not going to be worth the investment. And you're better off like Nikolai Tesla in it so that when you die, there's some kind of legacy or you've advanced society. Or you've done something intellectual and you've enjoyed your life. Which coincidentally is exactly what we'll get the girl sell later on, in addition to the gym. All right, so that's your that's the main thing. That's the pill you got to take, the economic decision pill, <clears throat> the cost benefit analysis pill, the book of numbers, analyzing the ROI of the pursuit of women, of which is linked below, and will provide you all the data and analysis and actuarial studies and, and analyses for you to come up with a very informed opinion. And I strongly recommend you do that because if you don't, you will waste and ruin your life. And then coincidentally, if you come to the conclusion, no, it's not worth it. Because it's just, I'm just not going to get the girls, huh? <clears throat> also, go get the menu, Life Without the Opposite Sex, which I think I got. Yeah, here's the book of numbers, right? Here's the menu. Look, it's designed like a large menu with a hardback cover. You can get paperback if you want to. And that goes through all the things you can do in life. <clears throat> all right, the next strategy. We're going to go through the nines and the tens. I'm not going to go in order. The nines and the tens, your strategy is not one of acquiring or pursuing women. That has already been done in you going to the gym, having good genetics, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Uh, your strategy is one of defense. Because the one thing that was consistent about all the tens that I've talked to is that when they <clears throat> you'll you'll get good looking gals, there's no doubt about it. The girls make it very clear. Sometimes they'll come right up to you and hit on you. All the, there's no confusion. But the problems come afterwards. Because what the tens told me, and I figured it out, they didn't know why, but if like they'd go sleep with the girl and girls think sleep equals commitment, which it does not. And in their mind, they've been fed this Disney World BS that their prince will come, that it is fated to happen. In other words, they're not thinking about you as an individual. It's eerie how the conversations on some of these dates with the tens they were telling me about that went on with these girls. These girls like were were still giving them their leftist feminist or their resume <clears throat> that was still there because these girls think that this is their fate, that God or nature, this is their prince, they, and it is fated to happen. They are entitled to that man. And how many nines and tens are out there where you're like, whoa, I, we just had sex. We were on all of a sudden. Why are my tires slashed? Why are my windows broken? Because usually if you're dating eight, nine, and ten girls, they've never been rejected. They have ever turned been turned down. And they never viewed you as a human anyway. You you are their birthright. <clears throat> you are what they are entitled to. And how dare you just have sex with them and make a conscious choice, choice. Remember, girls, how you like choice? Not to commit to them. And then they lose it. They lose it because they think they're never going to find another guy like you again. How dare you? Blah, blah, blah. And that that's where you get the boiling bunnies. That's where you get the slash tires. That's where you get your stalkers. That's where Cappy got hit. Now, I wasn't no nine or ten. I might have been a high eight in my in the best of my times. But one gal, when I when I said, I don't want to date you anymore, she was up at that was more ego. Like, how dare you put baby in a corner? So maybe I know you high eights. If you like dare tell a girl, no, and she's good looking enough, she'll re <clears throat> hit me. And, and that's just like, man, if, if it was a different time, maybe I would have like, hey, 
I'm pressing charges. This, I'm done with this. I'm done with this. But neither here nor there. The point is, you got risk management. That's your strategy. <clears throat> That's what you got to worry about. Ranging from everything from slash tires to don't put baby in the corner to stalkers to... <gasps> Oops. Oops. I'm preggers. And that's where you gentlemen, <clears throat> not only like, I've talked about it. Again, I'm no alpha. I just like to not let people know where I live. You know, and if, if Cappy, if you were to go back in day, quite what if you go back in day? Well, I, I'd be like, well, I don't want people knowing where my fortress of solitude is. I, it's not a big fancy place. It's just a small little cabin. I like it. It's mine. <clears throat> my little slice of heaven. And I'm like, I would like do van life. As far as any girl I was dating, I'd be like, oh yeah, I'm an adventurer, internet guy. Travel around, give a false name, and then I'd get a van. And if I ever had to go into town, yeah, then the girl would be like, Oh, he lives in a van. And they don't know I got a nice little cabin. And you nines and tens, you got to worry about that. Especially if you're good looking. I know a real good looking guy makes a lot, lots of money. Play, uh, uh, and I told him, Don't tell women what you make. Don't tell them what you do. All psycho pass. All psycho. <clears throat> and he's a little bit older, so now these gals are in their 30s and 40s. And it's bottom of the night. The base is loaded. Full count. And now, oh, finally my prince has come. He, he is the one, and they don't even think uh, for a second this guy has an opinion or may not want to date him. And, oh, it, it, and then they get Cray cray. <clears throat> so that's your strategy, you nines and tens, especially going forward. And and it's it's always a moving target. It's always Overton's window. I'm getting older. I'm getting more gray hair. I'm getting further and further removed from the younger folk. Uh, but especially you guys who start making your money and you're good looking, your nines and tens. And these girls are being brought up increasingly without fathers, either because the dad is at present or the dad's there, but he's just been neutered. Didn't invest in his daughter's life. They've furthermore been brainwashed, is all the way to put it, by not only leftist feminist propaganda, which is certainly that, but more scary, like the entitlement. And I don't mean entitlement to like health care and education and <clears throat> pay for my four years of partying in colleges I major in philosophy. Like they're they they got Disney. They all think that they're gonna get that guy. They're all gonna get Chris Hemsworth. And if they don't, how dare you? How dare you? Don't you know you're just an NPC? You are a glorious handbag. How dare the handbag have its own opinion and turn baby down? And that's where you, you're you in the danger zone in that sense. So that's your strategy. But the, the strategy, the red pill, there's no, I wouldn't even call it a red pill strategy because you're not trying to acquire girls. Yours would be more like you go talk to a divorce lawyer. You look into vasectomy. You... I'm not kidding. You change uh, alias. Um, I wouldn't say asset protection, but just protecting your livelihood. That's what you're going to have. And, and more so into the future. I predict I could be wrong. I, I could be wrong, but that's what you got to look out for. Um, oh, and then the fake forcible bedtime, bedtime fun or not so fun accusations. That's where you got to. Okay. That's your world. Not every day, but you know, and it, and you know, if you're a ten, you know, and a lot, one one final thing before about the tens, an interesting thing. I would love to hear more tens comments. We need more data on it. Mine was a, an informal survey of I think four guys, because there's not that many tens. But one thing they all says I didn't know I was a ten, because most guys are like, yeah, yeah, rocks and sticks, you're gross, yeah, and they don't know I'm six foot two and really good looking. All of a sudden, like they they didn't know that was the one thing. Like they didn't know until they got a little bit older. Like, hey, wait a minute, <clears throat> these girls are hitting on me. Um, so if you are aware, you're, you're alpha male aware, if you're aware of that, <clears throat> uh, I would love to hear your comments. Like the, does the, I'm, I'm all over, I, I could be proven wrong. I need more data. I, I don't, I don't have a position. Just truth is the position. Tell me your data. Let me know if, if, if this is echoes your experiences or not, but that's what it looks like. So your, your, your strategy is, is defense. Now you got the 78s, your gray zones, and this is, is the danger zone. 
this is where the problem is because you get crumbs. And sometimes you're on a streak and you do well. And sometimes you improve yourself and yeah, you become alpha, right? But then life changes, you don't have time to go to the, or whatever. You, 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 you're in this twilight zone <clears throat> where it's not as clear the rejection where you're like, no, get out of here. There's no hope. You do get some bits of bread off the table. You get a schnurble of steak off the table, but it's still a lot of work. It, it, and, it, but it doesn't come to you as easy as the tens of them. They're not serving themselves up to you. And this is where I was. I would, I would like to surmise. And I didn't, I didn't come up with this. This was Adam Piggott. Adam Piggott came up with this observation. I'm like, dang, he's right. <clears throat> because my biggest problem was I had all the check marks. Made good money, real profession, you know, banker, established, you know, okay, if you want a prestigious title, yes, I was a banker, credit analyst, and a VP, it doesn't matter. Ballroom dance guy, I had side, and I had property on rental property. I mean, it could have, only thing was I was short, five, nine, second place does not count. And so, man, if I had a nickel every time I was dating a taller gal, because, well, I'm short and I didn't, tall gals didn't intimidate me. There was always the sense like, oh, you really, I really like you, but I can't make this just, we're not. And they come up with a lie as far as I could tell. Your temper, what temper? This is back when I didn't have a temper. Um, <clears throat> And they were all talking. And, and I looked, you know, as you're old, you're like, hey, wait, you know what? They they ended up going back with whatever, their ex-boyfriend or I wasn't. And then I, if I did see them, they were with a taller guy. I didn't put two and two together. But these gals, sadly, it's like they wanted it. They enjoyed it. I was fun. I was at one time, Cappy was a happy man, had hope and dreams. <clears throat> and uh, and so I was, I, you know, like to think I wasn't so boring a date. I did take girls out ballroom dancing, so also dancing, swing dancing, cafes, martini lounges, jazz clubs. I was a class act back then. Now I'm, I'm a debauched degenerate. Uh, I thought we had fun. I make them laugh. I had, I had shtick. Oh, oh, and it was always like pulling teeth. You know, I could get, oh man, dates were a dime a dozen. Getting them into bed was a different matter. <clears throat> and even then, oh, I'm having a great, but yeah, I know. What? What is wrong? What? You were having a grand old time, Lent. What happened? <laughs> oh, the one that broke Cappy's heart. The best date I ever had. I thought Cappy was in love. And this guy was like a nine and a half. And that one went away. And next time, just all sad and depressed. I'm like, what the? What? <laughs> oh, Cappy was hurt. Oh, young, 24-year-old tw Cappy. Oh, young and naive. And okay, now she's fat, divorced, and a single mom. But hey, <laughs> hey, back then, <laughs> that accelerated my red pill awareness. <clears throat> the point is... Though that you seven and eights, the you, you're you're at a huge risk, and that what you're at a huge risk for is that you're going to put a lot of effort, financial, chron chronological time, <clears throat> emotional, psychological, into the pursuit of women because you you occasionally get them, and yeah, you could fine tune your strategy, you can maybe improve it. The number one thing is to ask more girls out. That's that's the only thing I came away with with my experiences. But it's not going to be worth it. You're going to be pulling teeth. Why? Because that is exactly where the alpha widows are. Like, there's a gal who's, uh, let's just say, an eight. Really good looking. You really like her. She really likes you. You're an eight. Or maybe you're seven and a half, but you got all your, uh, you got all your ducks in a row. You, you make up for it on, on the paper resume, not your physique. She gets drunk. She really likes you. Got the great person I have, but. You're not Chad Thunderstroke. You're not that hot, sweaty night in Ibiza one time with Esteban. And they they think they can get that nine or ten. They think. And that is, I could be wrong, but Piggott had that experience. I'm like, that's why you'd have it. I'm like, that would explain it. I had all this great initial success, but damn it if I couldn't pull a second or third date, or damn it if they didn't stick, stick around for like, uh, I don't know, more than three months. Like what? And and, and the weirdest, lamest excuses. The, just the lame. And use. I would guess. I'd have to guess half the time they went back with the next. So they found a taller. But one gal. <laughs> I have eyes everywhere. I I did good. This gal really liked me. 
And uh, she was kind of a class act, and I had a bar in my downstairs, and she was impressed that I had self-employment. I was, what was I, 27, 28? I can't remember. <clears throat> Things were going well, and then uh, I uh, found out a buddy of mine taught tango, and she had met this girl, and she says, hey, aren't you dating this gal? And I'm like, yeah, kind of. I mean, we're not committed or nothing. But she was with another guy, and they seem awfully friendly. I'm like, what, really? I said, did a guy look like this and that and that? And then she's like, yeah, he looks just like that. I'm like, is his name? I don't know. Bob. I don't know. Let me ask. Sure enough, it was. It was her ex. They're taking a tango class together. <laughs> but that's that's the real risk of being in that the seven or eight of so the gray zone. You're going to get a shot. You're going to get some crumbs off the table. But these girls, especially as we go forward, especially if the girls are focusing on the top 10, they are still going to be convinced they're going to get those nines and tens. And I think that would be <clears throat> the, the most important group I'm targeting because you're most prone to lose the most in terms of time, money, and resources. All it is is resources. I don't care if it's time, money, those are the same things, or psychological resources, which I, is, is mental pain. I don't think that's a currency. Time could be converted into money and vice versa. <clears throat> But I don't know how we would a unit of currency and measurement, but it's still there. You still pay a mental or psychological toll and cost. All right. Whereas the guy who's a two, you know, just admits, yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna try. You still have hope, and hope is the worst of all the emotions or seven deadly sins. If it's not a seven deadly sin, it should be the eighth and number one deadly sin. It should be the added to the eighth list and be the number one deadly sin. <clears throat> And so I think that is where uh, a lot of the, the red pill still does apply self-improvement and all that, but there should be a big old asterisk. Like, Hey man, if you're in this zone, you're in danger. You're a seven. You're going to have a risk. They think there's hope, or you just got to fine tune it. Nope. She got a 9.5 dick and you'll never be that 9.5 dick. You'll max out at an 8.25 and she'll still look for the extra 1.25 because she got it at one time. And it and and that's where it's like, okay, now you really got to do a cost-benefit analysis. Now you have to tailor your strategy. Okay, yeah, self-improvement. And this, this is why I cannot emphasize this enough. And this is like the last chapter of the book of numbers. <clears throat> self-improvement should be your default strategy, whether or not women are part of your, your life, right? You should always become the best version of yourself you could possibly be because if you, if women are not, then you didn't waste your life. But in that journey, in that process, you will also increase your chances of getting the girls. It is whether or not you're going to put any investment, any hope, any other additional investment towards like, oh, I'm going to, oh, I like this girl. You know, like, man, if I, <clears throat> let me go back. Like, if I had to put a price on it in today's dollars, the pain that I paid uh, in terms of, you know, heartbreak, let's just, you know, Cappy had a crush. I wasn't perfect. I wasn't born a robot. I just got changed into that with multiple surgeries. When Cappy had a heart, I got crushed. Cappy got crushed by this gal. Now, if you had told me, look, dude, <clears throat> she's fun that way because she was drunk. She was on her game. It's like a drug. Okay. Well, alcohol is a drug. Sober, she's miserable, depressed, whatever. And she just, did. but down the road, she's going to get fat on you. You're going to have kids. And she's going to not carry herself financially. You could get overweight. You're going to be miserable. Had I known that, that would have saved me probably in today's dollars, like $2,500. Not to mention my time, you know, what, uh, four hours, I guess. Maybe five if you include the last time I went. Like, hey, you want to get lunch? Yeah, okay. <laughs> you hear that? I oh, never mind. Yeah, when you when you... Would have saved like, well, let's say 3000 bucks worth of pain, agony, time, and investment. All right. Now multiply that times 100. Because that's how long you're going to go and chase after these girls, right? Now you're talking $300,000 with some really back of napkin calculation. That's a huge price to pay, whether you're actually paying that in cash, time, or psychological, emotional, mental resources. All right. So you have to have a very shrewd a very uh, removed, dispassionate strategy. Whereas, you know, the three or the four, no, nope, not in it. Got it. No, I'm going to pay for it. Seven and eights. <clears throat> Boy, you're, you might get hooked, man. You might get hooked. 
And so you got to really remove yourself from the situation and realize you're there and be able to quickly assess whether or not the girl's pining for some other guy, some other ex-boyfriend that she constantly gets back together with, you know, the wife who's just kind of like, uh-huh. Like, if she ain't using both hands on the blowjob, you know, like, okay, I could see you're not into this. Bye. What was it? There was that video or article where the husband found, like, the wife wouldn't give him blowjobs. And then he finds a picture of her doing porn with a bunch of guys. And she's just sucking it like a popsicle stick, you know? <clears throat> He's like, what the hell? Like, there you go. And it's, and see, that all is solved if you get to the 9 and 10 stage. Then the women are eager. And then it's just ride or die. Again, maybe maybe you're a 7.5. If you work really hard, it, you could get to a 9.5 or a 9. All right, but you got to stay there. <clears throat> but just so you guys know, if you're a, a 6 and you bump yourself up to an 8 and that's all you can do, uh, you're in a da danger zone. Is that <clears throat> so? What it ultimately boils down to is where are you going to stay long term? Where can you stay long term? And of course, you're going to change, you know, you'll go in and out of these different three classes of men. If you're born alpha, you're going to stay alpha. All right, defense, you're playing D. If you know what I'm you're playing D and you're playing D, huh? Ah, you see what I did there, huh? <laughs> the double entendre. Hey. All right, so you're playing D, and you're playing D. Uh, and still, you might want to find some nice ride-or-die girl who's like a 7.5 and just treats you like a god and is nice and obeys you. Did you just say obey? Yes, because I don't do the – I do captive first officer. Please do what I say and don't question me. <clears throat> you are allowed to advise me, but please do what I say. I, don't, I, I really don't have time. All right, so you got that. Um, <clears throat> for the sevens and eights, you know, okay, can you long term sustainably get past a nine? Can you get into that zone and stay there? Obviously, you're an eight, much easier. Do you not go to the gym? You got great genetics, you're just lazy. Do you really want the girls? Do you want to, like, maybe you should just do this, get off your ass and get some help? Go to the gym. Everyone should be going to the gym anyway. Are you mailing in your efforts? Do you still live at home? You know, you got some good, your dad's a good looking guy. Your mom's a good looking gal. <clears throat> but you're living at home at 25. Maybe get a job. Maybe become a CPA. Maybe become some all saying you're 35. You got $100,000 a year in, in cash, $100,000 a year in income. You go to the gym or you just diet. And now you're, you're a catch. And you're going to like, I like this. I'm going to stay here. All right. Let's say you're Vouch, all right? <clears throat> you, now, I don't know if Vouch's parents good looking because he, he, we won't know, all right? Uh, but, you know, if Vouch hit the gym and he diet, okay, he's going to go from Vouch, uh, he's like a three maybe. He's not an attractive man. I'd say there's a lot of room for improvement. He could hit the gym, shave his head, do the Hulk Hogan beard thing. Um, I don't know how tall he is. Height's a huge factor, obviously. <clears throat> but he could improve, I'd say, up to better than average, 5.5. Does that change things? Not really, because linear eights and belows are not attractive. I think Vouch has a girlfriend anyway. So he may just he may have he may have played it off brilliantly there. I'm just gonna get kind of an equally attractive or unattractive woman, and we're just gonna be happy with each other's personalities. And yay, socialism. We are we have common love and our love for starving people to death communism what is that oh we got someone working on uh someone's throwing up a weed whacker or something way off in the distance uh so that that your strategy you wouldn't even you wouldn't even try that's not your strategy you don't <clears throat> you just to make an economic decision cost benefit analysis is the pursuit worth it yes okay then i'm going to be the best i possibly can and i'm going to stay permanently at a six well, I'm going to get some tail, but I'm not going to expect anything. But if you're a one, you upgrade to a three. Yeah, just go pay for it, man. Just go pay for it. And then it'd be debatable as to whether or not you'd want to even work up to a three or four or five. Because five is still ugly. Five, I know, is average, but five is still ugly in the eyes of gals. 
And so that's the universe, the two universal things, except for the nines and ten, is life improvement. All right. But the secondary thing is where are you going to be long term? And that then determines the specific sub strategies that you're going to follow to temp, depending on these type of three guys, these type of three classes that you are. <clears throat> and so when it comes for advice in books, nines and tens, you know, you guys, you know, a, a lot of people are. You know, this would only apply. It wouldn't apply. If you're, yes, I know. But for specific advices in books, if you're a nine and a ten, I'd be go reading like legal protection. Uh, divorce lawyer stuff, asset protection, trust accounting, that kind of thing. If you're a one through a six and you're not going to improve, don't even bother. Just make the acceptance and you go live a nice life of, I wouldn't say debauchery and hedonism, but play your video games, have eat whatever you want. And here's the key thing, do it guilt-free and not only guilt-free, but don't worry like, oh, maybe I'll have a girl. Get rid of the hope. Just live a monk. Seven and eights, there it depends. You either upgrade permanently, if you can, to a nine and a ten to class A. Sound like one punch man, class A. <clears throat> or you stay seven and eight, in which case I would really take a lack of, like, yeah, if I get it, I get it. If not, I have no hope. I know they'll be going on the way soon. They'll go back to their ex. They'll go with a taller guy. They'll find better. Right. Uh, but a lot of the books in there would, would apply to you too. Just don't think, oh, I'll finally get the girls then. It's like, this is a key to life improvement. I'll read these books. Read The menu and the book of numbers already presupposes you're not going to get the girl. You've, you've, not, you've locked out you, or you've clocked out. But what it does is it shows you mathematically what your chances are. And then outside a life of women, whether you're pursuing them or not, your life should be like, here's all the things you can do. It's like, oh, okay, here's what I got going. This is what I do. In the and if a girl happens to come along, cool. But then I would also say your, your Troy Francis's books and, and classes, Modern Life John. I'd say Modern Life John's uh, courses are to bump your, your, your rating up to increase to a different class. All right, that would be Modern Life John. <clears throat> Troy Francis would obviously be pick up and increasing your numbers in your game there. Uh, Sterling Cooper would be increasing your sex game again, improving yourself, bumping yourself up a little bit more, but also tactics. Mine would be, okay, this is going to give you the incentive to make the decision, what employee, uh, what strategy you're going to employ. And Rolo's works would just basically be, we're going to take all the confusion and worry and angst away. You will not be confused or worried. And so you're going to become a stoic no matter where you are in one of these three classes. We can't promise you that you're going to get all the girls in the world, sir. But at minimum, what we can do is remove all the stress and pain and agony and confusion. So it ain't like the dark analog days where you just think like, there's just got to be something wrong with the girls in my university. Or maybe I'm fishing in the wrong hole. Now you know. <clears throat> and now you, and as an economist, I'm more concerned that you don't waste your time on this planet on things that just aren't going to pay the ROI. So there you are. All right, 350 people, if you would subscribe. So I could get up to 100,000. Uh, let's see if we got any super chats. So that's it. I just want you to save time. That's it. Just everyone save a little bit of time. Want to address the legitimate critiques. Well, if you did alpha, yeah, but no, it's, there are three distinct groups of men, three distinct classes of men, and you can ebb and flow between them. But it all means different strategies and different things you're going to take from all the different Red Pill content out there. Uh, let's go through the super chats. Me, Mike, two bucks, hair cappy, do the rug match, <laughs> strong, brave economist. <laughs> no, the, the, uh, curtains don't match the drapes. Or the carpets don't match the drapes. I had one girl dye her hair there and dye her hair down there. And it was good. And it, and it was good, saith the Lord. The Lord. I gotta write a book. No girl would listen to it, but it would be like the simplest tactics. <laughs> Not one. I know our regular girls would do, but it, it wouldn't be worth my time and investment. I'd be like, here it is. Here all. Here's all you need. There you go. Uh, Tom Longley, uh, 10 Australian dollars, not a 10, but watch women's brains break when they ask you why you're not dating <clears throat> and you reply with, I'm not wasting that kind of money. It's always a 
good for a brief giggle. Uh, I, I, there's been times where it's like, I'm dating. I am. I'm already dating enough women or I've, there are times where I'm like, no, I've, I've had enough. I, it's a pain in the ass. Uh, but one I always wanted to try. See, so you come up with these ideas, but I'm not in the market anymore. <clears throat> but would try this one, guys, if you're short. I'm not tall enough. Oh, no, I can't date. Well, why not? I'm not tall enough. And be dead serious about it because you are serious. Now, you know, I'm, I'm five eight, man. I can't, I can't date. That's a waste of time. I, I got more important things to do. And then down the road, if I am going to, you know, get a wife and I'm going overseas because, you know, people are shorter. Not, not because of culture. Like, don't even give them that, that, that argument. Like, oh, no, because they're shorter over there, you know. I was thinking about going to <clears throat> whatever the Philippines are, they're shorter over there, but um, more traditionally minded. But yeah, right now I got to work and focus, but I, I don't have time to date. I'm, I'm too short. But, 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 because when we want to keep up that facade that everything's a meritocracy and they're completely warped <laughs> and delusional dating market. No, we need you to come back and keep flattering us and feeding our egos. Don't leave. Yeah, there's different, I know, like, oh, no, I make too much money. Like, that's another good one. Like, no, I would make way too much money. No, I, I don't need to get sued or me too or anything like that. No, I, I uh, make too much money. Another one. Oh, yeah, I, I date, but I only do seeking arrangement. Well, what's that? Well, you kind of pay for it and the girls go away. <clears throat> you explain that it is literally ladies of the evening work, which we're pro sex worker here. And then they're appalled, like, well, no, no, they, they make money and, you know, uh, I don't judge and it's easier and they go away and there's no crying or relationship, you know. Well, yeah, I got a girl in Chicago, a girl in Denver. I travel a lot for work, you know, I could afford it. Just, I just save a lot of money. I don't go to nightclubs. I don't you know. It's, <clears throat> I used to spend so much money on dates. You know, I, one time I added it up. You can lie. I ended up dropping $40,000 on dates in one year. And I'm like, man, you know what? I could, I could get a lot, a lot of tail for that. <laughs> I don't understand. I was paying for it anyway. <gasps> Hypersonic, supersonic. <clears throat> Me, Mike, two bucks, five nine, same. Second place is first place. Is first place loser, right? Well, just use the five nine, man. Now nah, I'm too short. Now nah, I'm gonna go overseas. Well, I'm working now. I don't <clears throat> I don't really date, I don't have time. I, I make too much money. <laughs> so I'm gonna send this to a Pete. Ah, oh, there he is. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> Jim's right there. <laughs> Uh, Jack Steele, 10 Australian dollars. This is the menu coming out on Audible? I submitted it like uh, five days ago. Um, so it, and it takes Audible a while. It could take them. They say 10 business days. I've had it last two to three weeks before they get around to it. And um, yeah, I had to do some editing because it wasn't the right bit rate and all this other stuff. So hopefully it's accepted. Ram Badger, uh, boy, look at all the foreigners. Got Australians and Canadians, all the former empire. Ram Badger, 10 Canadian dollars. Here, and I have this one Persian girl from my work who tries to initiate conversations with me, and I think she might be interested. What should I do? Don't you? Okay, look, Ram Badger, it depends on your job, okay? <clears throat> Let's say you're working fast food or something, all right? I would go get another fast food job or I would probably just date her with the full intention of losing that job. I, I would. I, I just would. Uh, ideally, you'd get another part, another job elsewhere uh, so that you could date her and then therefore not have getting fired on your resume. You wouldn't have a, a um, Harris Harris meant uh, accusation on your on your resume. Uh, so that would be the way to do it. Um, but if this is your career, your profession, no, what don't you understand? What, why are you asking that question? That is such a stupid question. No, you don't talk. You don't hit on her. <clears throat> you don't ask her out. You just, you are polite. You are civil. You are professional. You do not sit. Look, here's the problem, guys. You know, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Replace rejected. 
So like you could be playing a totally cool, totally straight professional. If you don't go out with her and you don't uh, receive her, her advances, she's going to be resentful. Now, hopefully she is professional. She is ethical and she doesn't decide to destroy your life because her feelings are hurt because you, you politely through silence rejected her advances. But you can't afford you. And so now you got to think, okay, do I have to have a camera? Do I have to record every conversation? And this is where, where is it? <clears throat> Here we are. Young man, you didn't, because you asked such a stupid question. Your your penance is to go read this book, The Pence. Huh? Huh? See it? The Pence Principle, Randy Bentwick, or Randall Bentwick. Short book. And get through that, get that through your head. It, uh, what are the chances? Very small. They're very small. But what are the chances of getting, I don't know, some kind of disease or something? Very small. But you should still get the vaccine for it. Yes. Um, you, you don't know. You, models of models hierarchy of needs here, guys. <clears throat> Food, clothing, shelter, safety. Then you get the girls. You're threatening your food, clothing, shelter, and safety. <laughs> your job. Your job. Bros before hoes. Jobs before hoes. You never threaten your income with romantic interests. Never. There you go. Mooksaksa. 90. 10 Australia. Man, we got a lot of Aussies here. 10 Australian dollars. Yes, finally, Cappy Live. Long time lurker. Love your stuff. Well, thanks, mate. See, mate. Okay, we got American. <clears throat> Joseph Cantorini. Five bucks. My brother is six, six and I'm five, nine. The menu has been a pleasant read. Yeah. Oh, wow. How did that happen? Who's your dad? Your mom? It can, there's no way. <laughs> I know there's a way. But man, your mom must have been playing the field. How did that happen? Do you guys even look the same facially? Uh, got the, the, oh, no. Hat and clogs, $2. No, Cappy, leave me alone. Got to play the video games. Well, there's your choice, right? <clears throat> Look, hear me out. Let's let's go through a budget of a day. All right. Instead of money, we're going to use time. You got to get eight hours sleep. You got to go work eight hours, let's say nine with a commute. All right. And including getting ready, let's say just working home. So 17 hours of your 24 hours is gone with just survival. So that leaves you seven hours left. Now with the seven hours, <clears throat> you got to eat basic errands. Knock out two hours there, you're down to five hours of free time. And let's say you spent two hours playing video games, an hour at the gym, and an hour just effing around on the internet, and then an hour watching TV. Okay. Now, did you really produce much of anything of value outside of work? No, not really. You, but you got the gym and you did that. Would you rather have been rushed? The entire time with the heightened stress of going to a nightclub, for which is a three-hour endeavor no matter what, and a cover charge, not to mention the drinks you buy. And I, I know people don't go to nightclubs. So I'm just showing you. <clears throat> and then you got back, and so your four hours were gone, and then maybe you had an hour to calm down. Do you see that the first day was a higher ROI? You got to do what you want. It was more enjoyable. It was more pleasant. Whereas going to a nightclub is a pain or swiping. And that's one thing. If you go through the book of numbers, you guys spend 90 minutes a day. Women and men spend 90 minutes a day swiping on dating apps. Oh my God. You could do so much more with your life than that. So much more. Start a business. Start going to school part-time. Learn to be a mechanic. Do your own carpentry. So much more productive stuff. Um. I think even then I said, and if you guys work an average job, you could afford yourself a lady of the evening once every two months. A good one. So, yes, it's okay to play the video games if you're doing other things like diet, health, all the other good stuff. 
SJ, two Canadian bucks. Would you date again if you became single again? Ah, uh, no, I, I, I've made, I've told other people, maybe I haven't made the official announcement. I would absolutely pay for it. <clears throat> I would absolutely go to like a seeking arrangement or a sugar site, find a girl that was cute. Like, look, I'll just pay you to come around. Like, you know, if we're attractive and all that. And that's kind of what's happening anyway. One of the tens I talked to, he's on seeking arrangement. And a lot of it, it's, um, you can have an option to not have it be compensated. The ladies, I mean. Uh, where it's just, no, I'm only dating. I'm not into that. So that is rapidly becoming the the dating platform because you there's a hurdle. Men, I think men have to pay a monthly fee. <clears throat> then you have to pay the girls, but some girls say, well, you don't have to pay me to hang out with me, but I'm only here for dating. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not a lady of the evening. And so that basically screens out all the poor guys because I think it's pricey. It's not, it's not cheap to go on, on seeking arrangement. Uh, but if I were to date again, I would absolutely just pay for it because you're going to pay. I don't have time. That's the other thing. I'm old. I don't have that much free time. And all of my labor is a hundred dollar opportunity cost because I could do, I could do asshole consulting, uh, not for 40 hours a week, but I, it's there. And, and I have, and I cannot emphasize this enough, gentlemen, <clears throat> you need opportunity costs. Okay. It's an, uh, let's run it this way. Let me, let me run this past you this way, SJ, and hopefully you'll kind of see regardless of your age or opportunity costs. Okay, roughly I'd have to ask out 10 girls. Maybe 30% would say yes. Of that, only one in three is going to show up. And of that, so we're already one in 10. Of that, it's a very small chance it's going to be an enjoyable thing. It's going to be like a job interview. It's going to be tedious. I'll try and be funny and all that. But remembering when I went dating beforehand, <clears throat> it wasn't fun. It was not fun. And then you got to date, what was it? Uh, three, like one in 10 are going to sleep with you. So I got to do that. I got to go out through 100 gals to get laid. No, no. Mm -mm. I, I Maybe mean, if there's a cute girl, I'd ask her out. Okay, fine. It's there. She's there. But if I want to get laid, which I do, it's like, here's the money. I am, I am not playing around. I am not 23 anymore. I do not have the, and I don't care how shameful you, you couldn't get, you had to pay for it. Yep. Just like you did, Mr. Divorce guy with his alimony checks and half his assets gone. Yes. I had to pay for it at a fraction of the cost that you did minus the mental pain. I mean, y'all that, 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 that argument would reflect off of me, just roll right off my back. <clears throat> but that was how I would date. And, and if I would date, okay, there's a, Hey, how do you say, do you want to? And it'd be what dating I would do would be very time conscious. I would go like, hey, you know, I'd be down at this place anywhere. I'd go to a, I don't know, a coffee store. I'd be going there anyway. Like, hey, yeah, you want to meet at the coffee store? Well, what time? Oh, I don't know, 11. How does that sound? I'll see you at 11. I'd show up at 10. I get my work done. I enjoy my coffee, my dank and donuts. And then in the two thirds chance she doesn't show up or certainly doesn't show up on time, I'd get up and I'd leave. 11 05. Like, All right. See you. Bye. Um, it, it just, there would be no, wouldn't let her know. I'd, I'd, I'd have to get a van. I'd have to pimp it out, look like I do van life. Uh, I wouldn't be doing online profiles or dating or anything like that. None of that. Uh, no. I, I would, I would not. And then inevitably, maybe there'd be one that like, oh, I really get like, see, <clears throat> you say, well, how would you find a wife? Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Wouldn't keep you getting married. So the optimal outcome would be you have your own house and we can hang out together. And then you go away and you go to your own house and we're never getting married. We're never having children. And I would also be like, and at any point in time, you can leave. Uh, at any point in time, I can leave. And that would be it. That would there be no marriage. So you'd be like, you're gonna find your future wife on a on a sugar site. No, there's gonna be no future wife. There be there might be a gal I like we're committed to, but there would be no wife. There'd be no cohabitation. She would have her place, and I would have my van. And then maybe <clears throat> if time went on, I learned I could trust her. Then I'm like, ah, I've been lying to you. I don't really do van life. I've been living a lie for four years. Spending a lot on unnecessary gas on that van. I, I have a house over here. Can I come over? No, you cannot. <laughs> no, you may not. 
Uh, uh, Donna Hannaford, five Australian dollars. Sent my 16 year old cousin the book of numbers. He loves it. Good. Well, don't make him so dark and dire. All right. That, that's a little early. Send him, send him worthless or batch of pad economics. Um, the book, I, I don't want these boys. I want them warned. I want them informed. I want them educated. I don't want them scathing or hating women. All right. So worthless <clears throat> bachelor pad economics. I mean, there's, there's enough. We talk about women there, uh, but the book of numbers is pretty, I'd save that for an 18 year old. That's like a book you got to give an adult, young adult, but an adult. I mean, I guess it's better now than, than later. We caught up. Hatton clogs two bucks. Oh yeah. Going to Reno. What should I do? Uh, go to, go to Lake Tahoe, go hike around Lake Tahoe, go to Virginia city. Hey, I think they, speaking of which, I think, uh, the hues are legal out there. I think there's some, there's some bunny ranches out in that area. Rollo keeps talking about it. I was like, yeah, you got a hundred dollars. You're not an incel. I can show you. Come on out. We'll go. And I don't know if it's Reno proper or if it's in Carson city or Virginia city or something like that. So yeah, go get laid. Why not? Dude? <laughs> what are you going to do? Spend 20 hours getting a date and then having to spend another 10 hours going on three dates to maybe finally she's okay with having sex. Do you have 30 hours of time? I don't. Uh, algebra, five bucks. I'm five, seven in New York. Oh, is, is New York. I, I have an, a Jewish agent in the field who came out of New York. He says the sex ratio there is, is in favor of men. It's, it's pretty easy. South America is so much better in terms of ROI. Okay, I'd imagine so, yeah. I mean, if you look, especially if you're looking for traditional gals, I mean, the gals in New York are all careerists. One thing my Jewish agent in the field did say, uh, real Jewish, not me, fake Jewish, uh, real Jewish. He said that um, the gals were professional. They were on time. Because Okay, <clears throat> criticize career women as much as you want. And I don't, I, as long as you're making money and producing real jobs as a private sector, not some charity nonprofit job that I'm subsidizing through taxes. Good for you. But one other thing he said is that they showed up on time. Like they're a punctual, they're professionals. And that's good. That's good. So and I, there's a silver line in New York City. I just wouldn't hang my hat there. Uh, but if you're looking for traditional marriage, yeah, South America, of course, because you have more traditional women. Boo, 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 boo. Uh, Pete says, I would have loved to know my odds at 16. Could have saved a lot of time. Still turned out okay in retrospect, but even so. Yeah, I <clears throat> I know. I, I guess it's a balance. I'd, ra I'd rather he know at 16 than not know at all. It just, it's a little... Oh gosh, look who's in the house. Man, we let anyone in here. I um I suppose, yeah, it's better than not at all. Uh so there you go. All right. So questions, answers. Asshole, oh, here we got more. Uh assholeconsulting.com. Check out Pete, the guy who refused to invite to social gatherings. Uh, and he's got more of an analytical kind of thing going on there. But a younger crowd, obviously. <clears throat> my books link below the menu life without the opposite sex and the book of numbers analyze the ROI on the pursuit of women. And then also today's the last day to sign up for the minimalism course. If you have problems spending, you have a spending problem. Uh, take my minimalism course, achieving minimalism theory and practice that's available through teachable.com. I don't have that link below. Uh, you have 45 days to take the course, but you only have, it, it's only open for enrollment on, for the rest of the ninth. And then at midnight, I close it. It is 450 bucks. Don't complain about the price because you piss away so much more money on other things. And that does not include tax. Warrior Brothers, 10 bucks. Hey, Cappy, what's the name of the video of when you talk about the perfect mental state? I think that's a topic worth digging into. Love the menu. Congratulations. I think, look, I finally figured out women. So I'm about figuring out women. Um, I should retitle it the perfect mental state so we have the search term rather than just a, a general parlance phrase that people... Uh, but I think I figured it out. Uh, but yes, the perfect mental state. And I did not mean to make that a pawn on PMS. It, it just had to think about what is it women want? Women want the perfect mental state. They will never settle for They will not. They are not capable of settling for anything but a perfected mental state. 
Uh, all right. Are we all caught up on the Super Chats now? I think we are. See you guys go. All right. See you guys later. Toodles.